Hey y'all, Daniel Aaron here, your guide to vibrant living. And I got one basic question for you. Have you ever felt like you were stuck in a box? Like there was some kind of issue in your life or persistent problem or something that you've tried to get help with, you've been stuck with, you didn't know how to break out of, you paid for help on, you tried this solution, tried that solution, but somehow it just didn't seem to move or perhaps even stuck in one now. I put both hands up because yeah, right, who hasn't? Everybody's had that experience. So, last week, I had a upgraded understanding of quantum physics laws of the universe and how to shift reality and here's how you know and this is a great experience I'm sure you've had this too where you, you learn something here intellectually and then life presents you with an opportunity either to apply it or stay in the old way of doing things so here's what happened I am attending a retreat last week in Vancouver, and uh, just a couple days ago, Sunday, amazing, beautiful day. It's um, snowing, which is kind of rare there, and a lot of snow, and the city's going a little bit crazy. So um, that afternoon, <coughs> excuse me, we're finishing our retreat, and I have a plan at the end of the retreat. I'm going to meet up with my friend Udo, and uh, he's going to pick me up at the uh, venue where I was for the retreat. So great, easy, he's got a car, I don't need to do anything. Then I get a message from him and it says, uh, you know, my car is not working, how about you take a taxi and meet me at the cafe? So, okay, cool, no problem, right? Um, now, notice in that moment I could have said, oh no, it's not working, I could have lost, um, I lost, could have lost state, I could have gone into some cr contraction or reaction, right? Um, so instead, I'm feeling especially great and positive, so I say, okay, no problem, go back into the hotel, this is where the venue is, and I say to the hotel staff, hey, I need to take a taxi, where can I get a taxi? And they say, oh, the taxi stand's down, so they go down to the taxi stand, and they say, oh, I mean, we're not used to the snow here, and um, you know, it's the taxis are way backed up, it's like a 45 minute wait for a taxi now. And I'm thinking, oh, I'm supposed to meet him in like half an hour, 45 minutes, wait for the taxi. So they said, but where is it? Maybe we, you know, maybe there's another way. So very kind, helpful staff. I tell them where the location is. They look it up. They say, oh, actually, you know, you could take the bus and you take this bus and then this bus and that'll let you off right near where the cafe is. So I say, all right, cool. That's good. You know, that's a, um, uh, that's a little adventure in the snow. Awesome for, you know, Hawaii boy to get out there in the cold and snow. So another opportunity where I could have said, oh, it's not going my way instead. All right, let's go with it. So I go out there, snow's coming down. I'm feeling like, ooh, it's fresh out here, awesome. And uh, cruise along, get the first bus figured out, get, you know, wait for the second bus, get the second bus there. And then on the second bus, we are um, getting close to our stop. And to get there, we have to go across this big bridge, you know, and, um, the poor bus driver, he's getting a bit stressed out because he's not used to driving the snow and there are accidents happening. And um, so I'm trying to, you know, appreciate him for his efforts. And as we are coming over, we get to the top of the bridge and then we look down and the, like the last third of the bridge, it's just a sea of cars. And I don't know if there was an accident or what, but it was just a complete blockade. No one was moving. And in fact, as we get a little closer, we see all the buses are pulled over on the right side of the road and they're stopped they're done not doing anymore and literally we're on the bus stop there behind the other ones and this guy comes up on um, cross-country skis right up there on this major two-lane high highway bridge says you know you gotta let everybody out no more buses moving so I think okay here we go this is what we got get out of the bus um, walk the rest of the way down the bridge to the other side and I get there and I'm like, all right, well, so where's the cafe? So I get my phone out and um, open up Maps. And, and then I say, oh, that's weird. Because Maps says that, in fact, the cafe is on the other side of the bridge. It's a big old bridge. So I'm like, all right, what to do? So I pull my cap on a little bit tighter and um, cross over to the other side and walk across the bridge. It takes me like 
Probably 15 minutes of walking and the wind is blowing and snow in my face. My beard's all white at this point. I'm starting to get cold and I get to the other side of the bridge and I, I get that feeling. You know that one? I'm like, something's not right. I'm looking around at the atmosphere. So sure enough, I pull out my phone again, like my fingers are shaking and I open up maps and it says the cafe is on the other side of the bridge where it just was. So at this point, I'm like, oh man, oh, I don't feel like walking across the bridge again. And meanwhile, Udo's been waiting for me for like an hour now already. Plus, I got plans to meet friends for dinner after that, and the whole thing's getting a little bit wonky. So I'm like, starting to feel myself contracting. By the way, that'll be a clue. I'll come back to that later. Starting to feel myself contracting a little bit, like, oh, this is getting hard. Wait a minute. And then I'm like, what am I going to do? And, you know, I could walk across, maybe I could get a taxi bomb, but they told me the taxis are just packed right now. And um, here I am on this major bridge, two busy lanes each way. And, you know, if I, maybe I could get a taxi if I'm on the other side, it's going to have to be going that way. So I'm looking like, can I cross over? And, and the, you know, it's a little dangerous and there's like a barrier between the two lanes. And, and I'm thinking about this. And then I remember the teaching. I'm like, wait a minute. We live in a world with infinite possibilities, infinite dimensions, and there must be a reality where this is easy, right? I've gotten caught in some kind of uh, struggle, and that's not the reality that I choose to be in or need to be in, so what do I do? Here's the formula, it's not that hard, it's pretty simple. And it is, one, tune into the frequency of another reality where there's an easy solution, where I get to the cafe and it's easy and I get there on time, safely, right? And tune into the, that dimension. What does that mean? It means have the thought of it, believe in the possibility. The thought becomes the frequency of it. So that's stage one, tune into that, like, yes, all right, there must be that reality there. It's the t second part is then love or emotionalize, energize with positive energy, amplified emotion, which is a frequency of oneness as opposed to struggle, which is duality. So I get to that. I say, oh, yeah, I, li I like that. I like that um, dimension. I like that box where it's easy and it's fun and it's safe. And I get there on time. I like that one. So I'm right there in that process. And I'm like, yeah, I can feel that. And I kid you not, the very next thing that happens is I look. The next car that comes across the bridge is, and I can't see it at first because it's snowing so hard. It's a taxi with the uh, available light on literally this happens within 10 seconds of me emotionalizing I put up my hand the taxi pulls up exactly in front of me I step down from the curb get in the taxi he drives me around the bridge it takes all of four minutes to get to the cafe I get warm in those four minutes I walk into the cafe they're about to close Udo is about to leave and it's just perfect timing we go over to another cafe have tea together and have a really wonderful time and it so easily could have been me trying to struggle my way through it fight my way through it so once again simple formula infinite possibilities in front of us infinite dimensions there is a reality where you are not in the box the struggle, whatever it is that you feel confined by right now, first step is to say, oh wait, there must be another reality where whatever this problem does not exist, whatever the solution to that problem does exist. Imagine that possibility and when you tune into that frequency, right, it becomes alive. You energize that possibility. That takes you out of the confinement of this box. Then when you emotionalize it, create an elevated emotion, when you fall in love with that possibility, then you are creating life into it. That is all you need to do. And then 
just be on the open for it continue forward and you have magnetized it to you and by the laws of the universe it will become a reality for you now as you may have guessed this is a simplified uh, explanation for this for those of y'all in uh, our membership I will go into more detail and give you kind of the graph and formula in uh, with more explanation for the the science of it and how to actually apply it in your life if you're not in the membership and you're interested I invite you I will put a little information down here below and for now that is it thank you for being interested in the dimension, the infinite possibility, the reality of a vibrant life. Thanks for tuning in, y'all. See you later.